Hey guys, welcome back to another Realm of the Mad God video and for today I'm bringing you a guide on how to get good equips. Now, just to preface this because I don't want to raise your hopes up into thinking there's some super easy way to get top level equipment, there isn't. The point of this guide is to tell you the most accessible ways you can start boosting your strength and get good equipment without running around and wasting time. Part of what makes Realm of the Mad God a really addicting game is how everyone has a fair and equal shot of getting drops. It doesn't matter if you're a top level player or a noob, if you get sold down, you get drops most of the time. And so the goal is to make sure you're making the best use of your time doing the right dungeons and doing the right things and that's the point of this video. So before we begin, you gotta meet some prerequisites. Number one, join Discord servers. As pervasive as they are, make use of the tools given to you. Thanks to the community, established Discord servers have been made to give you catered and organized access to specific dungeons, namely the difficult ones like Lost Halls, The Nest, Shatters, Fungal, Cavern, and Oryx Sanctuary. Regardless of how you feel, everyone can agree they're very convenient and so definitely take the time to use them. Number two, watch my other videos. In terms of where you should be at this point, I expect you to at least meet the stat requirements for the discords which means attack, defense, speed, and dexterity should be maxed. Check out my two guides on how to properly max those if you'd like. You should also have some basic equipment, so my recommendation is tier 10 weapon, tier 4 ability, tier 10 armor, and tier 4 ring. All four of these are really easily obtainable in the Godlands dungeons, so you shouldn't really be hurting for those too much. And number three, make a friend or two. Realm is always fun to play with a group, so if you know someone, then hop into a Discord call and this whole experience will be way more enjoyable. Take my word for it. Alrighty, so that out of the way, let's first start with the most accessible location for getting good equipment that many people kind of forgot existed. Oryx's Castle. I mentioned this in my maxing guide that the wine cellar is a very underappreciated place to grind for equips. Despite the advent of T13 weapons, T14 armors, and the new Oryx 3 tops, wine cellar tops are still more than enough to make ends meet in any dungeon you go to. Given how easy it is to go to wine cellars, especially if there's an Oryx event going on, hop into realm clearing servers, do a couple dungeons to max your stats in the meantime, and then when you go into Oryx castle, get some work done in the wine cellar. If you're lucky, you can very well get your hands on one or more tops in a single bag even without loot drop. This is the primo place to get your starting late game equipment, and if you get into realms that are closing soon, it is possible to get through about 20-30 to 30 wine cellars in a single day. And if you end up getting the drops you don't want, like if you're playing a wizard but you get a sword at the acclaim, you can easily trade that acclaim for a couple of life potions to then just buy a staff or something else. Also, be sure to hang on to old tops such as tier 11 weapons, tier 5 abilities, and tier 12 armors. Those are still good enough to get you through a lot of stuff if you ever do need spare equips. Now, once you get yourself situated, it's time to work towards grabbing the good stuff. Bear in mind that it does depend from class to class, so I will not exactly be talking about abilities because if I were to go through each individual class, it would be an hour-long video and no one wants that. Right now, your objective is to pursue higher tiered equipment. Some dungeons are more favorable than others for certain classes for sure, but your goal at the moment is to increase your general coverage. Tier 13 weapons, tier 14 armors, and unbound rings, or tier 6 rings, are the next priority. The hands-down fastest way to get the armors would have to be the nest. Initially, it can be rather dangerous if you don't know what everything does, including the boss, which I do agree, the Killer Bee Queen has a very high KD ratio with the amount of players she kills on a daily basis. But the reason why she's the best choice for armors, even though a bunch of other bosses can drop T14s, is because the nest theoretically is the fastest of all of them. If you chain like 8 nests back to back to back, you can probably blow through all of them in like an hour or so, whereas you can only get through about 3 voids or a total of 6 bosses. That, and in my opinion, the Void and Marble Colossus have a much higher death rate, I mostly have you go for armors because they are a lot more accessible and to this day, they're still quite valuable since they make you more sturdy, which makes you less likely to die, which means you can save up more items in the long run. For tier 13 weapons, the two choices are Oryx 3's mini bosses and the Void Entity. The 13s are still really hard to come by, so consider yourself lucky if you get the one you're looking for. Not to mention, like I said, Lost Halls can be a rather yucky place if you're not prepared. My recommendation is to use a throwaway character. Public Lost Halls Discord only requires you to be maxed in attack and dexterity, so what you should do is max your speed and defense as well. Max speed is important because full skip voids are quite fast and if you don't have at least like 45 speed, you will be left behind and probably be forced to nexus. Defense, self-explanatory. The best classes to use as throwaways are the ones that don't need much investment but are still very practical and efficient in their output. So I would say a warrior, paladin, or priest. These three classes can all make do with very little in the form of equipment and remember when I said to save up your old tops, the 11 5 12 fives? Those do meet equipment requirements for pub halls, so make the most use of them. I can't really give you a full guide on how to beat Marble Colossus and the Void because then we'd just be here all day, but general tips are to focus on dodging, get your soulbound damage, but then chill in the back if you're still learning how the bosses work. It is important to be more confident so you don't spend the rest of your life hiding in a corner, but for the first couple rounds you just focus on staying with the group and staying alive. Know that it may take a very long time before you get the T13 weapons you want, 
Even to this day, I don't have enough of them, but on the bright side, during all this you will be getting a lot more attack, defense, mana, and life pots which you can use to buy more wine cellar tops or max out your characters. The new O3 tops, which are T14 weapons, T7 abilities, and T15 armors are what you want to go for next, in theory. But chances are if you're going for those items, you're way past the point of needing this video, so I'm actually going to leave those out because O3 is just a whole new kettle of fish, we'll talk about that some other time. Instead, what I'm going to cover next are the general white or orange bags you should get, namely the weapons, armors, and rings. It's kind of hard to narrow down the list of dungeons that's beneficial for every class because the way Realm was designed, certain dungeons are meant to be targeted by certain classes. For example, the only people really interested in going to a Woodland Labyrinth are bow classes because they want the Leaf and Virginia bow. Or people go into Lair of Draconis to get the Celestial Blade or Midnight Star, things like that. But in general, there are certain dungeons that can give beneficial rewards for any class. The first being Tomb of the Ancients. Aside from being a relatively consistent source of life potions, tombs can drop some very solid rings. Pyramid Ring is the best one all around to go for since it gives health, attack, and defense, which every class needs. Nile and Sphinx, more tactical with the former being a solid choice on classes that could use the extra mana and speed like knights or wizards, and the latter being ideal for classes that make liberal use of their abilities such as sorcerer, assassin, and priest. Despite the memes that Nile and Sphinx are worthless and Pyra is the only good one, each of the rings do bring something decent to the table and all should be considered and sought after. The good news? They have a very high drop rate for white bags, so with a little luck you can stock up on a couple of them without exactly grinding yourself to death. Next dungeons of import are the Fungal and Crystal Cavern. People really underrate the versatility of drops from these two dungeons. Not all of the white bag abilities that drop from these two are great, but more than half of them are, especially some of them can even be game changers. Most notable ones are Cave Dweller Trap, Spora Spray Spell, Tome of the Mushroom Tribes, Fractured Gemstone Wakizashi, and Star of Enlightenment. Heck, even the ones I did enlist are not that bad either. On top of that, the caverns are a good source of T14 armors if you're still working on that, and you can even have a shot at two very valuable rings. The first one being the Radiant Heart, which is a solid mixture in offense and defense, and the coveted Ring of Decades, which is always in stock. I'm just kidding, don't, don't buy them from real world trade. Don't buy them from real world traders, guys. All those people, all those bots that are in Nexus that are telling you to buy them, do not buy them, okay? You'll get banned. Mind you, their drop rates aren't the greatest, but hey, I find myself getting white bags from these dungeons quite frequently, and of all the endgame dungeons, I would argue Fungal and Crystal Cavern are the least threatening in my opinion. Also, they drop greater versions of stat potions, never a bad thing if you still need to max out a character. If we go back to Oryx's castle real quick, there are two important armor pieces that might suit your fancy. The Mercy's Bane and Anointed Robe, widely considered to be the highest DPS armors for their respective type. Not exactly the easiest thing to get, but if you're already running a bunch of O2s, then you might as well pick these up. Mercy Spain drops from Oryx 2 specifically, while the Anointed Robe drops from the two Stone Guardians and suits of armor that you destroy in order to access Janus. They don't have a very high drop rate, but you don't have to go out of your way to get them. It's important to make note of that while you're going ahead and trying to get your Wine Cellar Tops to do as much damage as you can to those statues, clear them all out, and make sure that you're contributing enough soulbound damage to the Stone Guardians, and make sure you get your damage in on O2, because you can get more valuable drops. The Lost Halls also provides very useful white bags even if you aren't playing an Archer, Paladin, or Necromancer. In fact, most of these drops are beneficial for all Sword, Bow, and Staff classes. There's a reason why people religiously farm Lost Halls. It's not only a great way to obtain fame, potions, and tiered equipment, but they're also providers of some of the best white bags in the game. The Call of Sword, Void Bow, and Cult Staff are all very useful, although maybe the Staff might be a little impractical to a certain extent. Armor pieces have their moments of import too. The Breastplate is the best defensive armor in the game, Ritual Robe gives a mixture of utility and damage, and Armor of Nil is a solid option for any class with high speed, not recommended for Archer and Huntress though. Instead, get the Golem Garments if you're playing one of those two classes because that's 7 attack, that's much better trade off for 6 decks, and you can afford the minus 5 defense because you are playing from a much safer range than if you were playing let's say a ninja. Rings, where do I start? Uh, Magical Lodestone gives you stats on par with the Forgotten Crown, only difference is that you trade HP for speed and defense, which people do consider a downgrade, myself included. Hey, still tied for the best DPS ring in the game. Swordstone is a fantastic utility ring that gives equal parts HP and mana with some speed, best on classes that are either heavily ability dependent like Assassin, or classes that don't need any supplemental defense like Knight and Paladin. The Omni Ring, which is still a thing of legend, is a ring that is valuable to basically all classes. And then finally, Bloodshed Ring, which is a solid defensive choice. I just think it's slightly worse than the Deca, but you also do get Wisdom, so best on Wismod classes. The abilities themselves are all very strong on the classes that use them. Marble Seal is unparalleled in usefulness, especially in a party. Skull of Corrupted Souls is a solid DPS enhancer if your party lacks some Mystic. And then the Quiver of Shadows is the best DPS Quiver in the game. All great finds in and of themselves. 
You might be asking me when I'm going to talk about Shatter since the Bracer and Crown are still amazing drops to this day. Yes, they are. But personally, I think the Shatters is just a waste of time. You only really do the dungeon if you want a shot at a UBHP ring since Unbound rings drop like candy in there. But I argue that you have a much better shot getting a Lost Halls White than a Shatters White. You can do so many other things with your time. Long and short about getting good drops is about what you'd expect from an MMO. Lots and lots of grinding. Oryx's Castle, The Nest, Fungal Cavern, Tomb of the Ancients, and Lost Halls is roughly where you would spend most of your farming days since they cover the most amount of stuff. Naturally, if you're playing specific classes, you have to research the UTs and STs that are useful to your class. For example, if you're playing a Bard, set your sights on Deadwater Docks or the Concertina. If you're playing Sorcerer, try your hand at the Wand of the Fallen. Playing a Wizard? Parasite Chambers. It largely depends on what you're looking for, but the point of this video was to show you the best places to farm for general equipment, namely the Universal White Bags and the Tiered Stuff. Hope this was insightful though. Once again, part of the goal to improve in Realm of the Mad God is to do your research. The point of my videos is to give you a step in the right direction, but in the end it all comes down to player preference. Some people are content with getting enough to make ends meet, and others want to go the full distance and get the best of the best. Choose whatever you're comfortable with, some people play a lot, some people play a little, some people are hardcore, and some people are casual. That's just how it is. If you enjoyed though, a rating would be much appreciated, and be sure to subscribe for more Rotmig content, but for now, that is going to be it. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon in the next video. Take care.